Welcome to uh, Dead 3. We're doing part two of the Gonzaga game at BYU from a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, this is the part two. We did a segment in there on the Duke-Virginia game, so we're playing a little catch-up here. But uh, I, we wanted to watch this game. One, we wanted to see Gonzaga on the road. BYU is actually a very tough place to play. Um, but I wanted to see Chet Holmgren. He had a really good game uh, this game and wanted to see what he's he's done. So part one gets us into it a little bit. And Holmgren, has, it did a fair amount in that first session. We're on 16 minutes here. So we've covered about the first four minutes of this game. When we get into the second half, I watched a little bit. I'm not second half. The second part here, we have seen a number of, uh, I've seen a few things already from um, Chet Holmgren. But they get into a diamond or a one-two-two press which is great when you have seven foot and six ten on the back line to cover mistakes, right? Um, I believe Holmgren's about to get a block here. But what I do like what BYU does here, they're deliberate, they engage too, they're able to pivot and make plays and change the floor against the press. And then right here, Timmy's going to let them shoot it. So you have to understand against the press what teams are trying to do. They're trying to speed you up. They're trying to get you to take quick shots. They're trying to keep you away from the basket if at all possible. Right, so right here, they, they broke the press, but they're also taking a quick three. Now, if you make this shot, you know, you can slowly start getting them out of the press and start getting to the rim and taking away what they want to do, which is, you know, to stop you from getting to the paint and to the rim and to get you to take these shots. So you got to make them if you're going to take them. Um, and unfortunately, right here, he doesn't make it. But what I do like is that this guy has been physical with Chet Holmgren in the start of this game. Now, keep in mind... Chad Holmgren here is going to be a top five player in the draft, if not the first player taken in the draft. So there's a great block out here. They actually get the ball. They fight him. But here's the difference between a guy that's going to – I don't. I know nothing about these guys. I really like BYU. Um, I know their coach a little bit, um, having grown up in the area around him and playing ball with him when we grew up. Um, but so I really root for BYU, but like, he may not, you know, I don't know these guys. I'm guessing he's not going to be, you know, a 10 year player in the league, like Chet Holmgren has a chance to be. So you're dealing with good versus great, right? So, you know, good got the rebound great at seven, two and great being able to have a wingspan to block shots, right. And great being able to quickly outlet, bring the ball up the floor. So keep this in mind. If you watch part one, one for my group. This is what we talk about every single workout that we do and every practice is how do we get extra shots, extra shots? How do we get extra opportunities? One, it's on the weak side of the floor. I don't I actually don't mind this shot. You know, it's just a matter of making these shots. So don't mind it. Timmy's rolling out to hit them. Um, we do get the block out, but it, this is the weak side. I, you know, I hope that we're we've got two on the weak side. We're getting a seven foot two guy. We're not great uh, in attacking there. So but then quick outlet. Doesn't change the floor with the dribble, and that's fine. You have a big as a rim runner. You have a big as a trail. He brings it right back to him, Drib kind of the fake dribble handoff right here, right? You don't get the dribble handoff. You're thinking you're going to get it, but he splits it. So he split a double, and then you get a seven-footer at the block, right? So keep in mind what we're looking for here. Drift, kind of maybe getting to this open area here maybe sliding to get in line of vision here and sliding to the top of the key, right? Which is what we get, right? We get a drift. You get this guy moving to stay in line of vision and you get this guy shaping up. So exactly what I kind of mentioned, I was hoping would happen, happened. There's a split. Watch, drift, shaping up to the top, shaping up to vision, right? So we always have somebody shaping to the top and shaping to vision and shaping to the baseline, right? So baseline. 45 top kick now because let's see where this guy even came from look so you know somebody he he went he helped off of timmy to go help he helped the helper he's jamming down to the drift because we're moving when the ball's on the when the ball's on the floor and we're not always standing and we're spaced to three we get that shot on a closeout on a two three step closeout we get a wide open three right? And look, just small things. Watch Holmgren. He does not concede the block out. He puts his hands, he bat, you know, he kind of pushes his hands down. He's fighting to get level, although he's not level. He's fighting to get level and own all that. But you get the wide open three because this guy's relocating. Okay, so we get that. 
So now we do dribble handoff, dribble handoff, back cut. You know, I like what they're doing here, right? And then there's a foul. But I like what they do on the out-of-bounds play here a lot because um, I've, I've seen this. Watch what BYU does here. They have some really good specials, right? So we're, they're going to get their best, which is 13, right? Um, and I, his name's escaping me right now. But I love this idea of a ball screen to a roll to another ball screen and to change a direction. There's a ball screen, not a great one by any stretch is that great dribbling with his right which is interesting but that's fine I mean he's a baller right he's doing it for a reason he's playing it loose and protecting on that he's going to roll but look at 33 sprint up roll to another ball screen now he goes downhill to his spot right and he's got him ball screen not a great ball you know and there's these fake and, and false ball screens, a false ball screen where you just immediately roll. That's cool. I don't know if four really knows what he's doing here on this play, right? But that's a ball screen. And it's not a switch. Because, so they get Timmy and Holmgren each having to guard the ball screen. Timmy comes out. He gets to the elbow. He shows it. He's got a little fade and he gets it up. They hit it. Now, keep in mind, BYU was up five to nothing. So Gonzaga went on a 12 to nothing run until that shot. So now it's 12 to seven, right? But here's the thing that, that we want to watch because we do watch it with Michigan State and we do watch it with Duke and Gonzaga. Um, definitely Michigan State seems to be, in my mind, kind of the king of this, but watch. Barcelo, I think his name is. So he makes it. Look at Timmy. Gets it out fast. People are running fast and three comes back and then the outlet's up the floor. So Holmgren's the rim runner. Rim runner, trailing big, dribble handoff to the trailing big, to the seal. Like for my group, hopefully you're watching this if you're my group, because this should reiterate everything we've worked on here in the short term, right? We've got an outlet, a change, uh, putting pressure on to a ball side cut, to a trailing big, to a seal. They could go high, low, but Timmy's also in a position to drive it and do a, a bunch of different things. Look, he's already motioning to pin down just to keep people away from Timmy. So nobody just stops and watches. I don't think four can guard him. And he's sealed out here. So where's the help come if we get there? So you're getting an All-American to the rim, right? He misses it, right? Live dribble, but you're getting an All-American, an NBA first round draft pick to the mouth of the rim right there. Right. And then you have the number one pick in the draft who's seven foot getting offensive rebounds because he's around the basket. Right. So good on BYU, though, to push the ball and get the ball out as quick as possible. Again, there's a ball screen in transition and they are look at for my group. Look at how they're just not catching and dribbling. Right. So we've talked about this with our group. Baseline drive, help outside the paint, baseline drift. And he's their best. Are we spotted up over here? Are we spotted up? But this pass, tough to be in the air passing, tough to throw an air pass when we're flat on the baseline here because that happens. So our group, it's a baseline drive, baseline drift with a bounce. We want it below this guy's hands to get it to third. So then we get it, and now we're pushing in transition, trailing big, rim runner, deep runner, and runner, right? So they change it with the dribble. Seal, big, like, look at how the big just owns it. Okay, so now listen, <laughs> I love this, right? Just to change over because everybody's running, you have your big already there. Like, it's so hard to match up. But now we're hitting threes, and I feel for my man Mark Pope because I really like him and I like BYU a lot, right? But here's the thing. It's a 17-2 to two run against the number one team in the nation. It's a seven, you started five to nothing. It is a 17 to two run against the number one team in the nation and you're on your home court. Shot selection, shot clock, post play, attacking off the dribble, second, third side of the floor, no offensive rebounds in terms of giving to Gonzaga. Like, what do you need to do to beat the best teams in the country when you're not the best team in the country? Now, if this is Duke, Duke can play this way and make these mistakes and take these shots. I don't think you can if you're BYU, right? And I could be wrong, you know. So there's the change. This, this guy to a ball screen. Look at the spacing here. What are we doing here? What, like BYU, what are we doing? And you could say, 
This is exactly how we drew it up. I don't know if you want two six tens and a seven foot right next to each other and all these bigs. I feel like fours jacking everything up in terms of spacing, reversal, and um, being in a position to catch the ball and make um, Holmgren play. So, so we're just not now, we're, you know, catch, like we're not, we're not able to reverse the ball and look at how far out we're pushed out. We're pushed out that far. And now we're left to hope that 13 has a game. We're hope that, that I think this is a, a kid named Learner is good, right? So we're just, we're just, we're crossing our fingers at this point. We are crossing our fingers if you're a BYU fan, that we're going to make plays. So he's about to maybe get beat baseline. We're running it into a ball screen. Uh, MIG, I believe uh, MIG, M-I-G. MIG is what I believe they uh, Kansas calls this position right here, that if they need a MIG, this guy, need, this guy needs to be in the MIG position. I kind of like that phrase, but he's not, right? And that's fine because you can defend one-on-one -on -one and cut him off in a two-step dribble. Okay, they finally scored again. But... Timmy gets the ball out fast. Okay, listen, we're trying to do these shorter, uh, shorter videos for you. We'll do another one. There's going to be four parts to this video because I'm, I'm getting more interested in how um, Gonzaga's playing, how um, Timmy's definitely playing, and really how Chet Holmgren's playing. So uh, let's, listen, do me a favor. If you could hit the subscribe button below, like this video, share this video, leave me a comment. Appreciate the feedback we're receiving about these videos. And we're, we're trying our best to improve them, but really appreciate um, the feedback that we've received to this point. Thank you.